there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because God first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, and yet hates his brother, he is a liar. Because if you have not loved your brother who you have seen, you cannot love God who you have not seen. And he has given us this command, anyone who loves God must also love his brother. This is the reading of God's word. You know, none of us wanted to be here today. You would have rather, and we would have rather, that George was home and safe, but racism murdered him. Racism is the reversal of the revelation of God. Racism is not perfect love casting out fear. It is perfect fear casting out love. Which means overcoming racism will require a love that is greater and stronger than fear. And only Jesus offers us that love. Only living the Jesus way offers us healing and we need healing. Because you know and we know there's nothing that any of us can say that will bring George back. So we came to say today that we grieve with you. And that your grief has awakened the conscience of the nation. Because we're here in God's house and in his church, because we believe in the risen Lord Christ, we grieve in resurrection hope. A hope that promises not just a reunion someday, but a restoration this day. We grieve in restoration and resurrection hope that God is at work in our nation, rending hearts and changing minds and bending the moral arc of the universe toward justice. And I hope you know that everyone would have understood if you said, we don't need to hear from any white people today. You've been silent long enough, you can be silent one more day. But I have to tell you, you asked the whole community to come together. And look what happened. You have chosen the path of love, the path of perfect love that casts out fear. And I want you to know that that is the path not only to your own healing, it's the path to the healing of the whole world. It is the path of partnering with God in redeeming the world. And it is a difficult path. You have been asked to carry a burden that would have crushed most people. And you have borne it with grace and courage. You've called those who disrupted protests with violence or looting to honor George's life with love. You called a president who sought to dominate to live in a peaceful world where we deliberate. You called those people whose perfect fear casts out anything that even looks like love with a perfect love that casts out fear. And you have been a model for not just America but for the whole world. And now we must follow your good example calling out anything that doesn't honor George or any of the rest of us, domination, injustice, oppression, racism. Stephen Kleinberg, the eminent sociologist at, at uh, Rice University, has taught us that Houston, Texas is the most diverse city in America. Houston, Texas is ethnically and demographically today what America will be ethnically and demographically in the year 2050, which means we are the experiment in America for how races can get along. But unless and until we are willing to be as brave and as truthful as you have been, nothing will change. The experiment will not yield any new data. We will simply do over and over again what we have done over and over before until, as Fannie Lou Hamer said, we get sick and tired of being sick and tired. So it must be different this time. And I have to tell you, at my church, it is easy to not talk about racism. At my church, it is easy to dismiss as politics the economics of hundreds of years of systemic racism, but, racism, but not talking and not acting is the path to destruction. 
And we can watch that on the news every night and ask if that's the future we want for ourselves. So could I just have the privilege, I'd like to say a word to white churches. We are better than we used to be, but we are not as good as we ought to be, and that is not good enough. Which means you have to take up the work of racial justice. Racism did not start in our lifetimes, but racism can end in our lifetime. But only if you ask and I ask, what am I going to do about it? And while it is still bothering you, write down what you're going to do on a note card and take that card on the mirror you see every morning when you get up and every night before you go to bed and each night ask, was I true to the calling? And every morning ask, what can I do today to bring God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven? Gianna, I saw you on TV. And a reporter asked you what was the best thing about your daddy. And you said, my daddy changed the world. And if we will do our part, you will have been a prophet. So from your mouth to God's ear. Amen.